Alright guys, this is DJ Crowley here, uh, Simmer Down 90.3 The Rock, hitting it uh, on the road once again. This time, uh, very special, as always, Nako Bear, Medicine for the People. How you guys doing? Yeah, yeah. Super good. <laughs> Such an honor uh, and really a unique experience to speak with you guys. Thanks. Um, speaking of unique, let's talk about your musical movement that you guys have started. Uh, How music came to be. Yeah, well, it's definitely an, a very untraditional story. Um, we, uh, we all have um, met at different junctures in the forming of the band, and um, uh, we all have completely different backgrounds. But um, I guess a, a very a common place for us all has been Hawaii. Um, most of us have met in Hawaii. Uh, actually, half of us met in Hawaii. And the rest, and the other half, uh, I met in um, our bass player. I met in Minneapolis, and our other percussions I met in Portland. But these two guys, uh, guitar and uh, Kit, met in in Hawaii um, at different times as well. So, uh, you know, there was never a moment in time where I was like, okay, we have to, we're gonna start a band, and we're gonna have like this, this like band thing. So it's been cool to watch it sort of form over uh, the last four or five years now, and um, and see uh, where it's taken us. I mean, you guys are blowing up, and and we're going to talk a little bit more about Hawaii here in a second. Okay. Um, but first, uh, you know, your family life, experiences in life in general, uh, seem to literally write your music. Yeah, I mean, my personal story is where all the songs come from, and in, in, in a lot of ways, in my own experiences, in my um, my uh, visions, my dreams, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's a very personal story, but it's been beautiful to watch it. Yeah. And um, you know, you, you went through some, even through some negative situations Absolutely. In, in your life. Uh, how do you make it so positive and so uplifting on stage uh, and, and I mean, on your records? I think we all we all have really interesting stories, and, and we all have, uh, come through struggles, and we all go through pain, and um, we all go through all the emotions of life. So I mean, um, you know, I think for me, the the reason or the the, the ability to sort of turn those things into positivity and into uh, hopeful situations has just been a part of my process of wanting to like live in that uh, live in that way. We got to talk about Aloha Kekua. Um, over two and a half million views. That was that was a blessing. We didn't we it's, didn't we didn't have anything to do with that video at all, other than one day I went to the studio and played the piano and played the song, recorded it, and then it was giving it as a demo, and then a fella from, uh, actually, I think he's from Mass. Yeah, Massachusetts, yeah. He, uh, he got the song, and then he bought the footage online, that's actually uh, stock footage online for commercials used in South America, mm. and, um, and uh, put the song to the video, and edited it all, and yeah, and then it went viral, so it's, it's yeah, that was quite the blessing, because it, it got the song out there, and, you know, the, the images on the video are very moving and have a really beautiful relationship actually to the words remarkably enough and uh, so yeah we had nothing to do with it that was a, a complete gift from spirit you know to us yeah and you know Jacob uh, from from Soja uh, did an interview with him last year and he, you were opening for him for the show in Asheville and he was like he, he sent me the link to Aloha Kekua and I fell in love and I think so many people have fallen in love and it really shows your and the band's uh, just passion uh, for life and music and it's unbelievable and there's so many animals in it. <laughs> this, Naka, yeah, Naka's doing some uh, sketchy stuff right now but it's, it's alright, it's alright. Ready to play some music band. Yeah, yeah. You're Naka Bear. Yep. What, what what is with and in all the songs too? I mean, you know, coyote, you know, elephant, everything. Mm -hmm. So where where do the animals come come through in this? Um, well, I mean, my my name means bear. So and I actually don't even remember how I ended up being started being called Knuckle Bear. Cause I think it started as a nickname. But um, uh, animals, yeah. I mean, I guess uh, I have found a lot of. I think all of us in the band have a lot of deep connection with animals and. Um, and uh, in the songs in particular, they've been big teachers for me and for, I think for all of us. And uh, um, in relation to Native American spirituality, we, we, we also relate to animals as being spirits as well as um, crossing over as elements of the nature. Um, so you find a lot of that in our music as well, with the understanding that like the thunder spirits or, or horses or 
um, Heoka is, is Coyote or like, um, you know, all, there's just a lot of crossover. Yeah, so that, that you'll find a lot of that in our music and uh, and and um, in our imagery as well. Yeah, it's a, I think that I'm everyone sorry. can connect with their spirit animal too if they really, you know, are yeah. open to it. And the spiritual element to your music is very intense. Can you touch on that? In, you know, just a second. Yeah, or yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, <laughs> in a second, in a second, or now, now, okay. and five, four, three, two. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so, why yeah. I like doing these interviews, man. I like the round table because we can just we can shoot some have spiritual. A good time. It's, yeah. What was the question again? Remind me. So you know, it's a very animals are very spiritual. Yeah, I think, yeah. and and in your music, you see a lot of spirit. I think animals music. can be very spiritual in the in the relationship to humans. Diagnosing that, you know, I think that um, yeah, I think that animals absolutely are spiritual animals. Uh, animals are spiritual animals. But uh, a lot of people don't really see it like that because humans often think they're stronger and better and cooler than animals, but actually we're all equal, so that's not true. The spiritual context of the music has a lot to do with, I think, me and my journey coming out of be coming from like a really religious background and uh, breaking away from the chains of like religion and um, coming into the world of spirituality and yes, adopting a lot of, of Native American spirituality, but also just adopting a, a, a broader view of what spirit and God is to me and making that my practice. And I think that we can all, everybody in the band has that same sort of like recognition of what our, uh, what is sacred to us and, um, and how we, in our day to day, work ceremony into our life. And um, I think that, that we have that foundation and that's why we, we love each other. I think they do love each other. Hey guys, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is uh, DJ Crowley here on location, Chattanooga, track 29. Yo, 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 hanging yo, yo, out yo, with yo, Nako yo, yo, Bear, yo. Medicine for the People. Trill. <laughs> <laughs> just got back from uh, my first Cali Roots uh, in Wilmington. That was a boom. Drop. Open arms. That was awesome. uh, say about that. It was such a great experience. So at Cali Roots, Bulldog, uh, Bulldog Media, big ups to mm. them. Those are boys. Huh? Yeah. They did uh, a little video for you guys. They did a great video. Yeah, for us. and we saw a very intimate look uh, into your soul when you did a little Eskimo kiss on somebody that uh, has been through some very, very difficult, difficult times in their life. You love helping souls. I know you guys do. So, what things besides the music are you guys working on to better the world? ourselves I mean at the root of it for sure I mean we all have so much to work through as individuals in this band as well as just recognizing what it is that we can actually do to better the band uh, emotionally spiritually you know, physically really just to, like stay within the realms of uh, walking or talk you know and that's a really difficult thing to do with a human being because you're just built to to really strip all the time you know, you're never gonna be perfect. You know, and I think that's a, and that's totally okay. And that's I think that's part of the message too is recognizing that we have flaws and that we have darkness and that we have uh, times in our lives and we'll fall and then that and we'll trip and we'll be scared and we'll be ugly and we'll be we'll be uh, 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 in the struggle. You know, but that's part of the beauty of the whole thing, the whole experience. You know, in part I think working on ourselves. What would you guys say as far as like? I think just like the more you like you get that feeling of, of helping people and making people happy and like you know like you just you see an old lady and she might need a hand with bags or something I've seen Dustin like just you know he just goes out of his way to help people and I think we all do uh, at certain times you know and it's like it's just that feeling of like helping people that is uh is contagious, you know, and, and hopefully it, um, and and helping people and it comes from comes in different formats a lot of the time, you know, uh, 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 cutting people off sometimes not in traffic but cutting people off, <laughs> you know, like you know what I mean, but like, <laughs> in, like in different like, forms, in yeah. different forms. I mean, there's there's so many different ways that us as individuals perceive how help actually helps, you know, like I don't I think we all will have a different view on what's actually going to help other people um, as a collective whole. Uh, and as like a as a society that's trying to move in a in a new paradigm and into a new direction, there's a lot that 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 um, has to happen uh, outside of us as an individual. Um, 
Uh, so there's a lot of moving parts to it for sure. Yeah. I, I think that, like with, with, with helping, I mean, just trying to go out of your way and helping people, like everybody. I mean, everyone's super nice and you know, or even in your in your way, it's like well, well, yeah. Like, I mean, e- e- yeah, exactly. <laughs> in your, I mean, that's true. You're I mean, one way. of the things that I do all the time, which is it's kind of gross, <laughs> is if I can step on a piece of trash, I pick it up and throw it in the trash, and I don't want to pick it up. But if it's in my way, I gotta move it. You yeah. know, just be, and it, I mean, little things like that. I think will definitely help with the overall good, and just like not looking for any type of recognition, not looking for any type of like yeah. glory out of it. You know, just trying to do what, what's what you feel you can do to help. It's a really interesting place to be in, to to really want to focus on creating uh, an overall like image of of uh, of doing good. Mm-hmm. And being able to actually like do good, yeah, you know what I mean, and that and and that I think is just like a that's just a work of of that will we, we all will be working through for us for lives. Yeah, right? and it all comes it always comes back to working on yourself before you can. Help. So you look at all the cur- like think about all the things that are happening in the world right now, you know, like all the it's straight out of a movie, out of a of a out of a crazy, effed up movie that Chaotic. we don't want to watch. That Stephen King wrote. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> and you're like, wow, this is really surreal. And you go, well, what what can I do to like to problem solve, and how can I be a part of a solution? And there's a lot that us as individuals, where we come from, what the what kind of work you do in the world, that you can actually do uh, physically, uh, you know, spiritually. Um, there's a lot to say for prayer. For a lot of people, you know, in cer- other other circumstances, other like. Other uh, mediums of um, of business and other uh, class and whatever you wherever you stand in society, that you may not be able to actually recognize what you can actually do, or or there may be people who don't even want to be a part of the change, you know, even part of like of uh, of changing things or being uh, being a part of like uh, recognizing that you know you're looped in no matter how you want to look at it. Yeah, uh, there's a lot to say for uh, to for working on yourself, you know, yeah. and that in itself is a revolutionary act. Guys, uh, you got Dustin Thomas, one of your own, opening for you guys tonight. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good night for sure. I want to talk uh, a little bit about your music real quick. I know we're getting to the end here. What's the future of some Nako Bear? And uh, what we have a new record coming out, maybe? <gasps> oh my gosh! No. No. I don't know. I hate <laughs> Pretty sure everybody wants to hear a new knock. We are definitely working on a new record right now. Yeah. Now we are we're working on a new record. Um, there might be something uh, soon coming out. I can't tell you when and where, but uh, and how and what. But uh, it potentially <laughs> might be coming out <coughs> soon. And um, <laughs> uh, and then the record, yeah, it's it's we have a bazillion songs, so they're all gonna be coming out of the closet soon. Oh really? Yes. Wearing. Big ups to clothes. come out of the closet. Respect. We're all we're all really excited to uh, to to get reco- started at least recording. And uh, we already started. We kind of still. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you guys recording? LA. Uh, are you in LA? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now so we're, we're hanging out with the Nako Bear Medicine for the People crew. Bunch of goofballs. Super cool people. We love them to death. Their music's unbelievable. Expect a new record very soon. Next winter. Okay, cool. Sounds good. So I close out with Next all my interviews with this question. I'm going to switch it up just a little bit for you guys. I usually say, what does reggae mean to you? And you guys aren't 100% reggae. We're not even like 10% reggae. Exactly. <laughs> However, <laughs> like just to say, we're not. Like, <laughs> However... <laughs> The lyrics. We have the message of reggae. And the message. Absolutely. The power, hope, survival. Revolution, love. So, what does reggae mean to you? Just, you pretty much just said it, man. Whoa. I mean, yeah. I, I would say, coming from a back, for myself, coming from a background of never listening to reggae, growing up on a, on a completely different style of music, um, and really only being introduced to reggae culture and reggae music in the last six years. I would say that to me, reggae means uh, it means family, it means community, it means um, it's it's passionate, it's it's revolutionary, bringing it's, people together in song and soul and unity. You know? But it's and, yeah, and it's also freedom music. You know, it's uh, it's uh, 
it's redemption music. It's also uh, um, island music. You know, it comes from it comes from the island island. That intention, not 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 that sound, but that intention has has uh, has rounded out in a lot of ways. I think the music that I write, you know, with that with that intention. But it, it even subconsciously, you know, it never was a conscious thing. So yeah, that's that's me. What about you guys? I think reggae is is as all those things that you said. You know, it's 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 definitely a revolutionary based you know style of music, and it's really heartfelt and soulful, and you know, and beautiful style of music. And I'm really excited and glad that even now that this type of music is really becoming more mainstream. I mean, it's, it's hitting. Like, like it really is starting to hit. And especially if you just look at the day, you know, the times, you know, in the mainstream media, the things that are going on, the changes and the fluxes, you know, in in this socioeconomic standing and everything, you know, reggae music has been saying these same things for, for years, you know, and the, the, the fact that people are really starting to connect with these new ideas and these new revolutionary way of thinking uh, in the mainstream media uh, and in the mainstream music is just a beautiful thing and I think it's definitely a step in a, in a wonderful direction of unity and, and togetherness that everybody's, you know, really trying to look for and grasp. It's happy, it's, it's you know, it's what you want to hear when you're when you're down or you're up. I mean, all music can do that, but reggae has well, this. And the cool thing, the, tr the cool trick about roots reggae mm -hmm. is that not only does it make you feel good, but if you aren't actually listening to the words, or if you are, there's actually like a deep message to it. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And you know, roots reggae in that whole arena, legitimately, there is a deep message to it. You know, and if you're listening to the words, which you know, a lot of people don't listen to words of music at all. They just feel the vibe, you know, and that's fine. If there's a true intention and like a and a solid like fierce and noble like you know vibe to it, then you're gonna you, you don't actually need to hear the words. But yeah. Um, but the poetry in itself, the poetry is so important because poetry is what drives us as listeners. When you're listening to words, we we're, we are we are a, a culture in America specifically that 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 is defined by what is being said. We always want to know. We're like, what's being said, and we need to hear the words, and like, da da da. And um, yeah, so I just hope that that the future holds a lot of good poetry involved in whatever music's coming out, um, because uh, we need those words. We need that. We need that intention. We need that vibe. I guess ultimately, it's like a way of activism. You know, like, you know, it's it, it, that's where it stems from. It's like people speaking out about, you know, and bringing people together and speaking out about their certain. Uh, Situations, yeah. You know, yeah. When it was very political in the beginning, it was, it was like, yeah, still is political, yeah. you know, and like, and that's what we are about. We are about bringing messages that um, may or may not be uh, palatable, tangible, even mm -hmm. uh, for for certain listeners, you know. And, and there's so much heart in this in this group and this movement that you guys are doing, and you know, you're just you know scooping we're up. We're not even like doing day. it. We're just a part of it. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of the times people ask us like, "What's up with your movement?" And I'm like, "Well, we're not really, we're just, we're just within the same wave of everybody else surfing the same wave. We're all surfing the same wave. We're not." All right, guys, Knocko Bear, medicine for the people. Thank you guys so much Thanks for guys. hanging us out, man. Really so appreciate it. It's such an honor, yeah. and uh, wish so you tough. all the luck in the in the job future. All the blessings. We'll see you guys. There Thank you so much. Thanks, bro.